Today, I'm going to walk you through how to record a live music session that you also film. I'm back on the factory floor. Well, now, did you ever see a volcano from the sea? It's like this fireworks cross the sky. A taste of brandy and power. What do you need to know to make sure your video is a success? In a recent video, I walked through how you can go about planning a music video shoot, and I'll link that at the end of the video as well. But once you've planned the video, there's some key things that you will need to get right on the day to make it a success. I'm going to be using a recent live music session shoot we did with local blues, country, Americana legend, Pistol Pete Wern to highlight some of the key considerations. Number one, make sure you have all of the right gear packed in advance. Make a list leading up to the shoot of all the equipment that you'll need to capture the sounds and sights that you are after. In the case of this shoot, we needed a computer to capture the music live in Logic. In this case, my MacBook M1 Pro. An audio interface, I use my Focusrite 18i20, which has got eight inputs, perfect for the shoot, where I wanted to capture two vocals, a violin and a guitar with a stereo microphone setup. Not ideal detaching this from my home studio, boxing it up and taking it into the location, but it's light enough to make it pretty easy and reliable enough to make it a solid option. The final piece of the audio puzzle was the microphones, stands and cables. Knowing how many microphones I was after and what I wanted them for, I'd handpicked specific microphones that I would use for specific parts of the audio. For this video, I used the AKC414 for the main vocal. Check in, I had the right threads on the microphone stands and the cables all worked before I headed out to the shoot is another best practice that I would recommend. There's nothing worse than turning up for a shoot and your gear lets you down. From a visual perspective, my number one tip is, once you know what cameras and lighting you'll use, make sure you have everything charged and spare batteries before you leave for the shoot. Wipe those memory cards, get everything packed in advance. Number two is ensure you have a shot list prepared that you've agreed with the client, if it's a commercial shoot or your other band members, if you're shooting yourselves. You should already pretty much know what you want to do before you get to the location and what you need to get in the bag to take with you to achieve this. From experience, shoots that go badly are ones where you take the mindset of let's get there and throw the camera around and see what we end up with. You don't want to be in this situation. Number three, when you arrive at the location, ensure you get set up as soon as possible. If you take this shoot, for example, with Pistol Pete, we had a time limit of around three to four hours on location. The amazing four gate vintage Emporium in Stafford where we filmed allowed us free access to the space thank you guys and quite rightly did not want to be there all night after a long day shift as soon as we were there and we scoped out a spot to film we got about moving items and dressing the scene then it was onto the lights and stands lighting our subjects from two 45 degree angles to the right and left and then lighting behind in a tiered way to highlight some of the backdrop creating depth and adding points of interest. Finally, it was onto the microphones, positioning them in a pre-planned way and making sure everything was connected to my interface. Finally, number four, uh, make sure you're happy with the take after you've shot it. Even if that means you're taking some time to play it back and review it, what you don't want to do is get home, review the audio, review the footage and find that something didn't work. Because at that stage, you can't go back. If you're working with a client in a venue, it's not something that you can just go and do again. It can lead to you losing reputation and losing money. They're my four top tips that I would recommend to you around recording live audio and video in a session with musicians. This is something that I've done many, many times, both for myself and my bands personally, as well as clients. It really, really is all in the planning and preparation. If you get this right, then the live shoot will be enjoyable. If you don't, then Trust me, it will be really stressful. And the chances of you getting a great end product will be vastly improved if you put the time, energy, and effort in before the actual shoot. These aren't things that you can just fix in the post-shoot edit. You've got to get quality in the shoot. And then it actually makes the editing process really enjoyable and a lot, lot easier. I hope you found that useful, something a little bit different, but something that I realized I'd never shared before on this channel and have a lot of experience in. 
If you'd like to know anything more around the behind the scenes sort of processes, behind recording audio for musicians or for lighting videos and filming videos, then comment below. This is something I've got lots of experience in, as I've said, working with my own musical endeavors, but also working with clients in an artistic and professional capacity. Thanks for stopping by and watching the video today. I've got loads of playlists that you might be interested in if you click below. Please feel free to jump down into the comments and sign up to my monthly newsletter. And if you're so inclined, then hit that subscribe button.